Hi all, Planetside Agent here. Uh, today we're going to go on with the continuing uh, saga of the uh, different uh, stove types brewing up a decent cup of coffee with the uh, Esbeth stainless steel coffee maker. And uh, today we're going to go ahead and uh, try a uh, gas canister stove and see how it works, which I, I think it will because this particular one has a very narrow uh, burner base, and I found, uh, I'm, I can't scientifically prove it, well, <laughs> I found that the, if you get, if you get e more, more even heat on the bottom of the Esbit, it, it brews a better cup of coffee, because uh, some of my earlier tests, if you've watched them, I did it on a uh, fancy feast stove, and the flames, you know, the bottom obviously is covered up by the fancy feast uh, pot base. And the flames come up and around, so it's not heating on the bottom. When I use the little burner that comes with the uh, Esbit coffee maker, it obviously works fine. And I tried it uh, with, uh, I think yesterday... I actually used the uh, wood gasifier stove here, which again, you can see most of the flame does hit the bottom and the, and the coffee was, was, was fine. So anyway, I'm just doing this probably more for thorough on this. I'm pretty sure what's going to happen. One thing, all, the, all stoves are different, and one of the things you have to be concerned with is the small base. It's only two inches across here, so you have to have a, a stove with a pretty a range that's narrow enough for it to seat nicely. Now this... This stove here is the uh, E-Tech City uh, propane burner, and it's very nice, comes with a self-start. But also, if you notice, the uh, pot stand has these little feet that you can uh, flick out for, for bigger pots. So, in this case, that wouldn't be enough for this stove. You can see it kind of wants to rock and slide off. Also, hmm, and then... So you flip these feet around, and uh, now it, it'll sit up there quite nicely and quite secure. So, you know, one thing, yeah. looking at it, not a lot of distance between the burner and the... Uh, oops, <laughs> i got to get in the camera. Uh, between the burner and the bottom of the pot, we'll see how, how that works out. Maybe it'll spread the flames out, and it won't work. Uh, of course, you're going to have that closeness no matter, you know, what what kind of pot you decide to uh, to use on this. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and uh, move the uh, camera around so you can kind of get a side shot and watch the coffee brewing. So, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Anyway, so I'll uh, turn this off for right now and uh, reposition the camera. Okay. I've got the uh, camera repositioned here, although it's kind of in the way as <laughs> a tripod. I gotta, I guess I have to come up with a different plan on this. Eh, let's get around here. Now, this stove here actually has a. Uh, am I blocking the camera? Probably. Uh, has an auto starter, so we'll we'll try that out. Come on. There we go. Whoa, the way she goes. <clears throat> I hope I didn't block the camera. I don't have to do this again. <laughs> I don't have it on a real high flame. I, sp I figure that's probably not necessary. Oh, yeah, I'm on the opposite side of the speaker, so I'm probably muffled. This, uh, if you haven't figured it out, this isn't a, uh, a high production value uh, operation here. The stuff you're seeing is probably just about the peak of my uh, audio-visual uh, abilities. So, anyway, I guess you can see that okay. It's got a nice little flame there. I think this will probably brew, brew just fine. What do we got about? about 1236, so we'll see about how long it takes. If it goes on for very long, I'll probably just uh, chop the uh, those bits out of the film 
film <laughs> video. I just turned the video off and wait a bit to, you know, save it from running, but the thing with this S-bit stove is you really don't have any outward signs that it's about ready to, uh, to brew. You know, you don't really hear any noises. And then it's just like, all of a sudden, a little water will start dripping out of the nozzle, and then bang, <laughs> and there it goes. So, uh, if you ever get one of these, be aware of that. see some water leaking out. Looks like I didn't uh, tighten the lid down enough this time. Now, I don't want to really force it, but obviously uh, I did a real bad job this dripping. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, that's not good. I don't see a lot of color in the uh, in the water coming out. Probably because of wonder if that dripping out's going to be a factor. It's coming out pretty good. I got it. Yeah, it's dripping out pretty bad. I think I'm just going to have to redo this video. I don't know if I'll publish this failure or not. <laughs> stove off yeah I made quite a mess here by not tightening it down you know these sort of things you don't want to tighten them too tight especially you know with any kind of an o-ring type seal because if it's too tight then you squish the seal out and the seal the o-ring and then yeah it defeats the purpose of the o-ring so anyway I'll just do a quick taste test here Uh, I think it's a little bit weaker than uh, what I've brewed with the uh, stand that comes with the stove or the one I did on the uh, wood burning stove. I think uh, I know, now I don't know whether it's because I was getting the, the air leakage around the top here on the seal or just the way it burned. But I kind of was suspicious because at the very start um, the... Uh, water coming out was pretty clear which on a normal one it doesn't so anyway yeah i think i'll probably uh try this again and uh see how that goes maybe i'll just be quick and just show you the actual brew if i can get that seal tight so anyway uh i'll call it quits for this portion of it and uh, i'll probably come back later on and, and do another brew so Okay, we're going to give this another try after the last one turned out kind of weak and we were getting all that uh, steam leakage from around the lid here and I thought maybe I didn't put it on too tight enough and it was on pretty good. I mean, I couldn't really get it down any tighter. So I, I took it apart to clean it and I got to wondering, there's inside here, let's see, do I got it here you can see it? Yeah, there we go. Uh, in, inside here, there's a rubber gasket that seals, you know, the top to the top from the base and uh, as I was feeling it I noticed that there is a little bit difference in the uh, in the lip here you probably can't see it but if you run your finger this side the lip is a little bit higher than than this side and I had it this way so I don't think I had the the this the shorter piece on the uh, <laughs> I can't really tell on the camera uh, for the seal so I don't think it was getting a good seal so I'm going to flip it around so hopefully that'll give me a better seal and I won't get the, the leakage out it and thus uh, a better cup of coffee which is all of our goal is to get that better cup of coffee so anyway I'll uh, turn this off for a minute while I uh, prep the pot and then uh, I'll fire it up 
Okay, I got the coffee pot prepped, so let's fire up the stove. We'll go ahead and uh, let her run here. I think the last time it took about three minutes is all for it to brew, so. Hmm, I wonder if I should uh, cut out the boring part between the uh, while we're waiting for it to brew or uh, just let it run and put music under it or just yak over the top of it. I don't know. I guess we'll all be surprised when I take this into editing just for the final, final cut. On the subject of uh, screwing stuff down tight, uh, I noticed when I was uh, setting this uh, E-Tech City stove up, you know, the uh, the little wings here, the pot stands, they, they kind of come around and, and collapse down. They slide along the bottom. I noticed that uh, the little up, upward piece here uh, came loose and I had to retighten it. So if anybody has one of these, that's just something to be aware of if you haven't already figured it out, that to make sure that's down tight before you fire it up. Oh, I hear something going on there. We might be close. Not seeing any leakage like we did oops, before. Yeah, the difference in uh, the lip of, both of that seal on either side is, it's especially because of the light color, it's hard to tell. You can really only feel it. So, but that definitely makes a difference because the last brew, as you saw, the thing was leaking, dripping all over the place. So, if you have one of these, be aware of that. Here it goes. Oh yeah, there you go. That that came out black right from the start. Ah, still leaking a little bit. Oh man, like crazy. Huh. Oh, and it actually put that stove out. Doggone it. Oh, crap. I mean, just didn't didn't brew the whole thing. Huh. You know, <laughs> I don't know if this is uh, something with this Esbit. You know, the first few times I used this uh, stove, I never, didn't have any leakage problem. But these last two times, it uh, it's, it's really leaking. So I don't know what the what the deal on that is. I guess I'll have to play around with it some more. So uh, yeah, it was doing good for a while. It was brewing right. I did notice it. You know, right off the bat, it was uh, it came out dark like it's supposed to, but then. Like I said, it, it kind of came out and put out the stove. So, hmm. See what I got so far. Yeah, it's nice, nice and dark. I wonder if I can get this fired up again and finish it because it's not quite through. I'm just going to make matters worse here. Nah. Oh, it's got liquid in the tray. Okay, now have to clean this mess up. Doggone it. So, uh, another uh, another failure. This isn't, uh, turned out to be a particularly good video. Anyway, uh, 
that's it for this round. I, I don't know if I'll try again or I'll just bag it all together. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, back again. Uh, yeah, I've decided just to call it quits here on this particular video. It does show that, that you know, the whole point of this video is where whether the Esbet stove would brew on a canister stove, assuming that you could, you know, the base, the uh, flame portion was narrow enough and the legs or the pot stand was was narrow enough that the, that the esbit would uh, fit on it. I'm not going to pick this up, it's still hot. <laughs> uh, so I think this proves that it will work, assuming your esbit doesn't leak all over it and <laughs> put the fire out. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe I'll... Uh, do a separate set of videos on my findings on this and why it's continuing to leak even though I thought I had it fixed with the uh, the gasket side but anyway what uh, what coffee I did get was very good so I think making sure you have a good seal is critical to good coffee on this but I'll do, maybe I'll just discuss all this in a, in a different video since this was really about about using the canister stove uh, yeah another note uh, I'm gonna have to I turned the video off. I started cleaning up some of the, you know, coffee that spilled down around it, and I tried to light it off again, and it looks like it's kind of clogged, so I'm going to have to take this off and take it in and clean it up a little bit more to get it working again. So, anyway, kind of a mess there. So, I guess a, a fail on making the coffee, but I think it does demonstrate that you can use this stove on a Esbet stainless steel coffee maker if you have one. So, anyway... That's it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope it didn't bore you too badly. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.